Okay, thank you for coming out today. I'm really appreciative of your interest in this course. Uh, excited about this opportunity to bring you a course in electronics that would be practical. And of course, if you want to know more about this, we have a website called tvecourse.com. All the courses are absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything to watch the courses. This is to help you learn about electronics because electronics has always been very fascinating to me. Uh, lots of people, you know, don't understand my fascination with it, but I grew up with electronics and, you know, when I was a kid, I used to be up on the roof building antennas because it was always a thrill for me to figure out how I could get a, a television station from 100 miles away if I just built the right antenna and put it up a little further. And so, um, you know, I, I want to help with a new generation of people that understand basic electronics because a lot of people are getting into computer electronics and are getting into specializations, but they don't really understand the basics like I learned it and like we used to know back from the, you know, the 70s. And I'm thinking of the people that, that taught me that were from the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, and they really got down into the nuts and bolts of electronics. Um, and so this is a practical electronics course. And what I mean by practical is something that allows you to do something. You know, uh, there's a lot of theory, and I'm going to touch on theory, but I want to impart on people the ability to go out and do something right away with the knowledge that I've given them. If they, you know, if they need to do something in their house or if they need to do something in a job or whatever, you know, and so I'm going to do, I'm going to do theory, but I only want to do the necessary theory, and that is the basic theory that's going to allow you to fulfill your desires to perform a technical task. Um, this course, and this one we're doing today is number one. It's theory, components, and connections. It's the necessary theory, and we get into schematic diagrams and components, and we want to familiarize ourselves with it and soldering and making connections, connectors, and things like that. And then the next section, which we'll do in a month or so, I hope, is computer electronics. And that'll be, you know, computer components. I want to show you how to assemble a PC from uh, the basic components and how to, how to make it work, how to install the software. Then this, the about three months from now, television and radio electronics, radio theory. We're going to cover a little bit of radio theory today, but not in the depth that we're going to when we do this course that's coming up in three months. Presentation electronics, which is basically PA systems, audio mixers, and everything like that. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me the question, well, who invented electricity or who discovered it or who invented electronics? And I'd have to say it was God because all this stuff existed and man discovered it down the road. And so this was a, a, a journey of discovery where we came up with ways of finding things that were already there and making it work for us. And, you know, no, and I, I'm going to go a lot into the persons, the people that discovered things, so that they can give you someone to remember and what they did. And I always found that fascinating in helping me remember these things that are basics in electronics. So I'm going to talk about history and knowledge. Now, I've got a picture here of uh, Theophrastus, which is uh, 400 BC. And he's a Greek that. Um, was the first one to ever come up with a term that even described what electricity was. So I guess he was the original discoverer of electricity. And the Greeks, they found that they could get a little rock, piece of amber, which is a tree resin. And if they were to rub that with lamb's wool, that the rock would pick up little bits of straws and things like that. And they didn't know what that force was, but they knew that there was some power of attraction going on here that would allow this piece of rock to pick up a piece of straw. And so they called that the power of this amber rock. Well, in Greek, amber was called electron. So that was the beginning of the word electron, electronics, was when the Greeks, when they found this rock, and they, they knew that its force was here, but they didn't know what it was. So that was the very first time anyone ever talked anything about electricity. Now, later on, we came to the conclusion that um, this was electronics dealt with what electrons do. Electrons are particles that orbit the nucleus of an atom. And here's a 
drawing of an atom, you see the nucleus in the middle and the electrons orbiting around the outside of it. And the little blue things like here and here and here, those are electrons. And I know I'm reading real simple, but I'm having to start with a simple basis for people who don't understand that. And so we're studying what these little particles do. You know, they flow in wires and conductors and so forth, and we are going to study what these do. And, of course, atoms make up all different kinds of things, and, you know, and we have like the sim simplest atom, which would be a hydrogen atom, and then we work our way up. But we have the periodic table of elements here, and that uh, shows us all the different atoms. I need to be talking louder, don't I? That shows us all the different atoms here and the different kinds. And some of these atoms are gas, some are solids, some are liquid, some are conductors, some are not conductors. And when I say a conductor, I'm referring to an electrical conductor. And what that means is it's a substance that will allow electrons to flow through it readily. And we're just talking about the structure of the universe and what things are made up. And one thing I found fascinating here is that if we look at our universe and what makes it up, we have 95% of the universe is made up of dark energy and dark matter, and we know it's there, but we don't know what it is. And then when you go on down a little bit further, we'll find that only about 5% is made up of matter that we can see, that we have, that we can like touch and feel and, and be aware of. So 95% of everything, we don't know what it is. I always found that fascinating. And then I talked about the states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Now, we talk about electrical charges. And one of the basic laws of electrical charges is that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. And so that means that we have a positive charge, which is an absence of electrons and a negative charge which is an abundance of electrons and a, le a negative charge will be attracted to a positive charge but two negative charges will repel and two positive charges will also repel from each other. This t we also in this slide we're talking about the forces of nature and we're getting into physics here. There are four fundamental forces of nature, and um, we have the strong force, oops, let me go back here. We have the strong force, which is the, the atomic bonding force, and that is there to make the atoms hold together, to tie the, the nucleus of the atoms together and so forth. And then we have the electromagnetic force, which is what we're talking about today, electrical, meaning electrons or electric charges, and then magnetic. And uh, magnetism and electricity are related. They're like inverse, inverse functions of each other. And if I'm getting too complicated, feel like you can stop me, and I'll try and explain a little bit more. Whenever, well, let me go on with this, and I'll talk about these forces and uh, electromagnetism just a little bit. And then we have the weak force, which is caused by atomic decay and then gravity. So these are our four fundamental forces of the universe. And what we're talking about now is the electromagnetic. Electromagnetism, light, like the light you see coming from the sun, light in this room, radio waves that you can pick up with your radio, um, whatever is electromagnetic in nature. Don't confuse that with sound. Sound is different from electromagnetism. Sound is compression and rarefications of air molecules in a media like a metal or air or space, you know, but as long as there's a conductive media, you have sound flow. Electromagnetism is a combination of an electric field and a magnetic field. It can be light, it can be a radio wave. <clears throat> we have the electromagnetic spectrum here. And we start at the very lowest frequencies, we call the very low frequency, and that's around 3,100 meters, and that is low frequency radio communication. And the VLF is uh, basically used for, sh for submarine communication because the waves will travel underwater. 
we go a little higher. We have our AM radio, our short radio, short wave radio, our television radio here. A little higher, we're in infra infrared. And then we have light, ultraviolet. And we only see this light in this area, but we have lower than visible light is infrared, higher is ultraviolet. Then we have X radiation, X rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. All that's part of your electromagnetic spectrum. We only see a very little bit of it. We can feel the infrared as heat. When you feel heat radiating from something like a stove or so forth, that's infrared. Whenever electricity is flowing through a conductor, a magnetic field is made around that conductor. If a magnetic field is made to move around a conductor, then it will cause the electro electro electrons to flow and so they work inverse or with each other to create an electromagnetic field. The thing is, electromagnetic fields can't exist without electrons. They can exist in space in a vacuum. That's how light gets from the sun to us through the vacuum of space. It's an electromagnetic field. Anybody have any questions on this point? OK. I want to talk about schematic symbols. You know, I, and um, I like to start off by talking about components because that's something people can get their hands on, get a feeling for, understand what it is. And so I'm going to get you to help me. I'm going to get all these different components and I'm going to start handing them out and uh, talking about them one by one. This, which you may not see very well, is a, um, is a diagram that shows the schematic diagrams of each and every component. So I want to hand these out. <clears throat> I want to start with the simplest one. Well, the simplest one would be perhaps this. See, there's the copper wire here. This is a conductor. It's a pure conductor. And just hand that around where everybody gets to put their hands on it. That's uh, something that allows the flow of electrons. It's made out of copper. Copper has what they call a loose electron in the atomic uh, bonding around each atom and that allows electrons to flow through it readily so that's why we make wires out of copper usually could be silver could be gold copper is the least expensive the next thing which is let me find a part here a resistor this is a resistor this is a carbon resistor this is a a packed carbon uh, which you could get carbon you know they used to get carbon off what they called lamp black when they had a kerosene lamp, they'd scrape that black stuff off the inside of the kerosene lamp, and they would take this carbon and they would compact it. And the carbon would have a resistance. It would allow current to flow somewhat, but not as good as a pure conductor. And so I want to pass this resistor around and let everybody look at it. And we're going to talk about resistor color codes in a little bit. Now the next thing, oh, and here's another resistor. The next thing I want to talk about is a capacitor. Now a capacitor is basically two plates of a conductor separated by an insulator. Now the purpose of a capacitor is to...